Hello, my friends. Welcome to our read aloud time. So we have started a new story. I hope you enjoyed chapter one. We're reading The Miraculous Journey of Edward Tulane, who we learned yesterday is a China rabbit. Remember, China is very delicate glass, but he has real rabbit ears and he dresses in the finest clothes and thinks of himself very highly like he is the best rabbit. We also learned that his owner is um, Abilene, who lives at home in the Tulane family with Pellegrina, the grandmother, and she is responsible for giving Edward to Abilene. So today's chapter is chapter two. Let's dive into it. And in this manner, Edward's days passed one into the other. Remember, he stands at the window with his little stop or um, pocket watch waiting for Abilene to get home at three o'clock. Nothing remarkable happened. Oh, there was the occasional small domestic drama. Once, while Abilene was at school, the neighbor's dog, a male brindled boxer, inexplicably named Rosie, came into the house uninvited and unannounced and lifted his leg on the dining room table, spraying the white tablecloth with urine. He then trotted over and sniffed Edward, and before Edward had time to consider the implications of being sniffed by a dog, he was in Rosie's mouth, and Rosie was shaking him back and forth vigorously, growling and drooling. Can you imagine that? Fortunately, Abilene's mother walked past the dining room and witnessed Edward's suffering. Drop it, she shouted to Rosie. And Rosie, surprised into obedience, did as he was told. There's Rosie and Edward. <laughs> Edward's silk suit was now stained with drool and his head ached for several days afterward. But it was his ego that suffered the most damage. Abilene's mother had referred to him as it, and she was more outraged at the dog urine on her tablecloth than she was about the indignities that Edward had suffered at the jaws of Rosie. Remember, Edward thinks that he is the best of the best and should be treated that way. And then there was a time that a maid new to the Abilene household and eager to impress her employers with her diligence came upon Edward sitting on his chair in the dining room. What's this bunny doing here? She said out loud. Edward did not care at all for the word bunny. He found it very derogatory in the extreme. That means kind of like hurtful. The maid bent over him and looked into his eyes. Hmm, she said. She stood back up. She put her hands on her hips. I reckon you're just like every other thing in this house, house, something needing to be cleaned and dusted. So the maid vacuumed Edward Tulane. She sucked at each of his long ears up the vacuum cleaner hose. She pawed at his clothes and beat his tail. She dusted his face with brutality and efficiency. And her, and her zeal to clean him, she vacuumed Edward's gold pocket watch right off his lap. The watch went into the maw of the vacuum cleaner with the distressing clink. The maw is the main part where all the dirt goes in the vacuum cleaner. And the maid didn't even seem to hear or notice. When she was done, she put the dining room chair back at the table and uncertain about exactly where Edward belonged, she finally decided to shove him in among the dolls on a shelf in Abilene's bedroom. That's right, said the maid. There you go. She left Edward on the shelf at a most awkward and inhumane angle. His nose was actually touching his knees. And he waited there with the dolls giggling at him like a flock of friendly, unfriendly birds until Abilene came home from school and found him missing and ran from room to room calling his name. Edward, she shouted, Edward. There was no way, of course, for him to let her know where he was. No way for him to answer her. He could only sit and wait. When Abilene found him, she held him close, so close that Edward could feel her heart beating, leaping almost out of her chest in its agitation. Oh, oh, Edward, I love you. I never want to be away from you. The rabbit, too, was experiencing a great emotion, but it was not love. 
It was annoyance that he had been so mightily inconvenienced that he had been handled by the maid as cavalierly as an innate, inanimate object, like a serving bowl or a teapot. Ugh. The only satisfaction to be had from the whole affair was that the new maid was dismissed immediately. That means let go. She didn't work. Edward's pocket watch was located later deep within the bowels of the vacuum cleaner, dented, but still in good working condition. It was returned to him by Abilene's father, who presented it with a mocking bow, like, here you go, sir. Sir Edward, he said, your timepiece, I believe. The rosy affair and the vacuum cleaner incident, those were the great dramas of Edward's life until the night of Abilene's 11th birthday, when at the dinner table, as the cake was being served, the ship was mentioned. What ship? I don't know. Well, we will find out soon enough when we get on to chapter three. I will see you for another read aloud shortly. Have a great day and be kind.